Welcome to I Lecture Online. Here we're going to take a look at something interesting and in the end maybe a bit disappointing. We're going to look at what we call the sum of the deviations from the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mean of a set of data. We're going to take a look at Tan B in this case where we calculated that, that the mean of all the house prices of the houses sold in 2018 was $200,000. So now we're going to sum up all the deviations, all the house prices from the mean. When we do that, we get an interesting result. So the way we would do that is we simply would sum up the differences between the house prices and the average house price. And of course, we put the house prices first and then we would put the average last so that if the house price is less than the average, we get a negative result, a negative de deviation from the mean. So we had five house prices. Here's the first house price, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth right here. And then of course we subtract from each the mean or the average house price. When we do that, we get the following. We get a negative 40,000 because the price of the house was less than the average. Negative 40,000, negative 20,000, zero because in this case, the actual house price was the same as the average or mean house price. Here we have a positive 20,000, a positive 40,000. When we sum them all up, that's what that symbol says, we have to sum them all up, we get zero. At first that seems odd, but then that's what we should get. If we add up all the deviations from the mean, we will indeed get zero, and that will always be the case for every data set. Hmm, so why do we have that? Well, we actually don't use the sum of the deviations from the mean, what we do instead is we look for the absolute deviation from the mean and sum those up. So what we mean by the absolute is that we take the absolute value of that. So if we take the absolute value of this difference, we get a positive 40,000, not a negative 40,000. If we take the absolute value of this, we get a positive 20,000, not a negative 20,000. So we need to be careful. We're not really wanting to sum up the deviations from the mean. We want to sum up the absolute deviation from the mean and then we get a meaningful meaningful value so let's do that on the next video not only will we sum them up but we want to find the average of the sum which means the mean of the absolute deviations from the mean hmm that sounds kind of weird but it's a useful a useful thing to calculate when we're dealing with statistics so let's take a look at that on our next video